Anthony was born November 7th, 1997. And um, the pregnancy was a little hard because they found out before birth that he had the hydrocephalus. So it was a waiting game to know what was gonna happen when he was born, whether he was gonna have physical or mentally be disabled. But um, to our joy that when he was born, he didn't have no physical or mental disabilities. The only problem we had to move on with was the hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is a buildup of cerebral spinal fluid in the brain. So what they do is uh, they put in a shunt, which his shunt was from the back of his head all the way down to his stomach. And what that does is uh, relieve the fluid that's built up into the brain, which would put pressure onto the brain. Um, he had the shunt from birth all the way up to 11 years of age when he passed. As a father, it's, it gives me peace to know that he did give an opportunity for three people to have a new life, to start a new life again. And for me, it's like he's a hero. He just lives through these three people and for the rest of their lives, he's gonna be a part of their life, whether they know it or not. This was the week of Easter, Easter Sunday. So we usually get all the kids, all the nephews and nieces, have the kids do an Easter egg hunt. This week he was having, you know, just some headaches, which could be associated with um, just a backup of fluid. So they recommended that he do the revision just to clean up the, the shunt and Everything went well, the operation went well. Um, he stayed there for a couple of days and he eventually came home and that's when he went into cardiac arrest. Anthony, whenever you met him, he was like this with everybody, family, friends. It's His smile first would capture you and he liked to joke and he loved being a center of attention wherever he went. He actually went to a car show with his mother. They brought him up on stage and he got to perform in front of everybody. So it was a big concert that they were having and um, they pulled him up on stage and he grabbed the microphone and they put the music on and he just performed for everybody. And it amazed me that he had that, he wasn't shy about it. Like he's total opposite for me, I'm a little bit shy. But with him, it didn't matter where he was at. He was always willing, he always wanted to perform and put on a show for everybody. The day that he passed, this was the same day they asked um, about organ donation. He wasn't breathing on his own. The machines were helping him. So in that time, they decided that it was time to pull him off the machines that because he was a clinically pass and um, we were approached by the social workers that work with organ donation and asked if we would if we would like to donate his organs it's never easy to make a decision like that when you just are going through a tragedy of losing the life of your loved one and in that time, I know my son was gone, but to know that saying yes to organ donation, you're also not only saving someone else's life, but you're continuing the legacy of your loved one, knowing that he or she is a hero to a, someone's family, father, mother, daughter, or friend. I think the hardest part was to know that my son was no longer alive. The easiest part was to help someone else not lose their son, daughter, or friend. So that was probably the easiest thing to do, to say yes. As time passed, we were informed that he did give one of his kidneys. As far as any other organs, I, I don't know what are they. Uh, unfortunately, I never got to meet any of the recipients. That's a process where it's hard for both sides to get in contact with because sometimes 
as a recipient, you feel guilty that someone lost their life in order for you to save. You know, hopefully I get that day where I get to meet the person that he did. So I, so I could just I have that feeling like if I could just give that person a hug, that I could feel that a part of my son is in there. And I, I'm, it's like I'm holding my son again.